Bottled water has become a giant industry, with people spending hundreds of billions of dollars on it globally each year, and not surprisingly, it is mostly dominated by well-established brands that are backed by some of the world's largest companies like Nestle, Coke, or Pepsi. Companies that are extremely hard to compete against, making it next to impossible for smaller newcomers to make much of an impact. That is what I think makes this so interesting here. The fastest growing brand on the market started just a few years ago with very little money and is technically not even a bottled water. It comes in a tall can. Liquid Death was officially launched in 2019 with a respectable $2.8 million in sales within that first year. That number has since increased at a faster rate than anybody could have reasonably predicted. In 2023, Liquid Death revealed sales of $263 million. It has been among the top selling water brands on Amazon and things continue to look promising from there. In early 2024, the company completed a round of funding that valued it at $1.4 billion, which is about double the value it was given in its previous round of funding about a year and a half earlier. Obviously, there are some shocking or controversial elements to the brand. I mean, starting with the name itself. But overall, I think there is a lot to respect about it. So in this video, I want to outline what I believe to be five of the biggest reasons behind its breakout success. Starting off with the marketing, and I have so much to say about it. All right, water is a fairly standard product, right? I realize there are different sources and filtration processes, but in the end, the presentation and marketing of it are huge factors when a person is deciding which one they want to buy. Since water is, well, arguably the healthiest thing you can drink, it is almost always promoted in a more relaxed, subtle way, commonly showing depictions of nature, as opposed to many of the less healthy products out there, like beer or candy, that tend to use more aggressive or humorous branding. That is what most of us have come to expect anyway, because it is believed to be the most impactful. But Liquid Death has taken the exact opposite approach with the belief that people concerned about their health will also respond to this more aggressive style of marketing and they will better stand out from the others by doing it. They intentionally go overboard with everything. The logo uses a scary looking font, the can has this wild skull on the front of it, the tagline is murder your thirst. Here, listen to this. If you go to become a member of their club, they call it selling your soul and you literally have to click the button at the bottom that says sell my my soul, and over 225,000 people have done it. I mean, Liquid Death is quite possibly the most counterintuitive name for a healthy product. According to founder and CEO Mike Cesario, you kind of have to trick your brain to come up with a bad idea to truly be thinking in innovative territory. See, Mike Cesario had always been involved with the skateboarding, punk rock, heavy metal culture. Back in 2009, he was attending Vans Warp Tour that was sponsored by Monster Energies, so the bands on stage were required to be seen drinking Monster. However, a lot of them didn't want to be drinking energy drinks all night. They just wanted to drink some water. So they started putting water inside of their Monster cans and that is where Mike Cesario first got the idea. I believe early on the target demographic was more people who couldn't drink or who didn't want to drink alcohol but didn't want to draw attention to that fact. Do you know what I mean? But obviously that demographic was revealed to stretch well beyond that because there are many people attracted to this type of branding that are also concerned about their health. Mike Cesario has a history in marketing. Among other positions, he used to be creative director at an ad agency that worked with Netflix. He made some promos for some of their shows, so when he had the idea for Liquid Death but was having trouble turning it into a reality, he basically made a promo for it. He spent a few thousand dollars to film a video and promote it on Facebook, and I would say it was extremely clever, particularly the part of it where it points out that water is not so gentle and innocent like most of the other advertising would have you believe, because when you factor in all the surfers and snowboarders and kayakers, water kills far more people each year than energy drinks. Within a few months, the video had millions of views and thousands of people in the comments showing interest in the product and wondering whether or not it was real. The brand has since attracted millions of followers on various social media accounts and has continued to think outside of the box with unusual marketing efforts. Just to highlight a few of them here, in 2020, they released an album on Spotify called Greatest Hates. It is a group of songs whose lyrics consist of negative comments that were left on their social media, and they have since introduced volumes 2 and 3 as well. The following year, they teamed up with Tony Hawk to release some limited edition skateboards that were colored using a mixture of red paint and Tony Hawk's actual blood that were sold exclusively on the Liquid Death website. Go to liquiddeath.com to get skateboards with my blood in it. 
that same year, they made a short horror movie called Dead Till Death that was released on a limited edition VHS, saying our horror movie is so terrifying, we just put it on a dead format. In early 2022, they bet $50,000 on the Super Bowl and sent a witch to the game to essentially put a curse on the other team. And during that game, they also aired an advertisement that showed children and a pregnant woman drinking liquid death. Again, it is just water, it is perfectly safe, but the ad depicted it as if they were drinking something different. Trust me, I can keep going for a while with these examples, but I think I have conveyed the morbid, controversial, humorous approach to their marketing and how it is in direct contrast to most of their competitors. My next reason behind their success, and I promise the rest of these are going to be much shorter, it is investors. Because as I make this video, Liquid Death is still a private company that has been reliant on rounds of funding from private investors. The name Liquid Death was trademarked in 2017, but it wasn't available until two years later because it was having so much trouble attracting investors who understood the unusual appeal of it. The way people responded to that first commercial on Facebook helped them see the potential for it and led to an initial $1.6 million investment that sort of got the ball rolling. Liquid Death has since had multiple rounds of funding, totaling to over $250 million, and including some notable investors, like Biz Stone, co-founder of Twitter, who was involved early on, later followed by comedian Whitney Cummings, actor Josh Brolin, singer Machine Gun Kelly, and of course, skateboarder Tony Hawk, just to name a few of them. All of the people who work for Liquid Death own a share of the company, and it was reported that Mike Cesario has held on to about 10% of it, giving him an estimated net worth of well over $100 million. And since 2023, he has expressed intentions of potentially turning it into a public company, which I would guess is likely to happen at some point if they are not acquired by a larger company first, because with economies of scale and distribution benefits, it is all very common within the industry. My next reason behind their success is availability, because Liquid Death quickly built up their direct store delivery model to over 100,000 retail outlets without ever making deals to become part of the massive Coke or Pepsi distribution systems. Just a few years ago, it was only available on their website and a few bars and tattoo shops in the Los Angeles area. Today, it is sold by all of these major retailers across the country, so most of the people watching this likely would not have to travel too far to buy a can of Liquid Death. In addition to being sold at live music events, in 2021, Live Nation, the world's leading live entertainment company, made a deal where Liquid Death became their exclusive water offered at many of their venues. And that has since been followed by other notable partnerships, not to mention being sold in bars and cafes just about all over the place. I don't want to spend too much time on this because I realize distribution might not be the most exciting topic, but it is a huge hurdle when growing a beverage brand like this, and Liquid Death has done a great job in keeping up with the public's demand for it. Going back to my list, another big reason behind their success is categories. Liquid Death has been working to expand beyond typical water to become a multi-category beverage maker. In fact, a lot of that $250 million of funding has gone toward product innovation. In 2020, they started selling sparkling water, which may be more like a soda given the ingredients, in the black and colorful cans as opposed to the white can that has the typical mountain water in it. As you would expect from them, all of the flavor variations have these clever, morbid names like Bury It Alive or Rest in Peach or Convicted Melon. In 2023, they started selling iced teas in their cans that quickly became one of the best-selling ready-to-drink teas sold on Amazon. When they first released them, one of them was called Armless Palmer, you know, like Arnold Palmer, but they were threatened with a lawsuit from the Arizona iced tea company, so they changed it to Dead Billionaire. And look, I realize that a lot of the viewers might find some of this to be in poor taste, but keep in mind, that is kind of the point. Liquid Death wants to be edgy and catch people's attention, so I think they almost like it when people are outraged. In 2024, they introduced an electrolyte drink mix called Death Dust with 35 calories calories per packet and a bunch of vitamins and minerals, and later that year, they started selling a hot fudge sundae flavored sparkling water. Again, something that I would not call typical, and I'm afraid that expanding into different categories might not sound too impressive initially, but keep in mind, it transforms Liquid Death from a water brand into a diverse company. It raises the ceiling on how far they can grow and how much they can sell, and they've been doing all of it so far under the name Liquid Death. I have a series on this channel called Bigger Than you know, where you will see that food and beverage companies traditionally expand into new categories under different brand names. For example, you can buy sparkling
sparkling water from Coca-Cola under the name AHA, or iced tea from them under the name Gold Peak. But when you buy those products from Liquid Death, it is all just still called Liquid Death. So if they continue growing at this pace within different categories, the Liquid Death name is the potential to become really strong. Finally, I'm going to say that a good portion of the company's success can be attributed to sustainability. Being environmentally responsible has become a major part of their image that can be mostly summed up by the hashtag death to plastic. What I'm saying is that most of their competitors sell water in plastic bottles that are not incredibly recyclable, whereas Liquid Death sells their water in aluminum cans that are much more recyclable. According to their website, most recycling facilities simply send plastic to landfills because it is too expensive to recycle it, but of all the aluminum produced since 1888, over 75% of it is still in current use. They donate 10% of their profits from every can sold to nonprofits that help fight the pollution of plastic. Liquid Death really positions themselves to be the more environmentally responsible alternative to the plastic water bottles, but I don't know if the reality of it is as straightforward. There is a whole debate out there over which one is better for the environment. Aluminum cans are much more recyclable, but are produced in a process that requires more power and releases more carbon. And there are other factors to consider, like transportation and storage. I'm not trying to say that one is better than the other, I'm simply saying that it is more complicated than you might think after looking at the Liquid Death website. Please, everyone should do their own research and draw their own conclusions. But either way, Liquid Death is positioned as the more environmentally sustainable option, and that has translated to a lot of sales. Let me know in the comments, how do you feel about Liquid Death? I imagine there are going to be mixed responses, because whenever something is so unconventional like this, it tends to be polarizing. Maybe you think it is the funniest and coolest brand at the supermarket, or maybe you think that they have crossed the line at times and the whole thing is a silly gimmick that you hope is going to start fading soon. Personally, I just want to say again that I have a lot of respect here. I can see where all the love and all the hate is coming from, but in the process, they have stood out and created a strong identity for a seemingly healthy product that is available all over the place and worth over a billion dollars. As always, my list was simply the reasons that I felt were most important or most impactful, so tell me if you think anything should be added or subtracted from it, and any other thoughts you have about Liquid Death, leave them in the comments. I'd like to hear what you have to say. Thank you for watching.